This ACC part two preview edition of the sports gambling podcast is brought to you by circus sports. They're back with their circus survivor and circa millions contest, $14 million up for grabs. Get all the details at circus sports.com. Hey, this is John Sally and you listen to S G P N let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second in the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kram? Dog. We made it, Colby. We made it. I'm sorry you're not here yet, but we made it. Joining us here to talk ACC part two preview, our final yep. uh, college football preview, a podcast here. Obviously, if you want to go in depth, check out Colby Dan and his 133 team previews. What's happening, Colby? I mean, just studying my maps of the ACC schools, you know, just deep in the in the interwebs. He, he just, yeah, just learned about Street View. That's yeah, really moving the needle. I, I would say uh, we did originally plan to preview every Group of Five con- conference too. Yes, but but, uh, but what? what happened? Plans were meant to be broken. There was just such great talk about Vanderbilt yeah. about uh, mm. you know Virginia I think that's really the part of the problem is we we start off these episodes and you're like oh yeah we'll just plow through the ACC and it's like all right this has got to be a two-parter so I think we realize all these yeah all the, the divisions have to be their own separate podcasts because there's so much to talk about when it comes to college football and the win totals yeah I would say I would love for someone to do stats on like well, how many I'd love to the know the shitty which, teams are f- more fun to talk which about. Which teams times. we'd spoke the most of? Like, there's probably a, a, a counter correlation between win total and minutes spoken about. <laughs> All right, before we hop into the ACC, the better half, uh, at least when it comes to projected win totals. Mm. Shout out to Circus Sports. Oh my God. Uh, can't wait till the end of August. Kramer and I will be hanging out for an entire weekend at the beautiful Circus Sports Casino, the sports book, doing shows, and of course, signing up for the Circuit Millions and the Circus Survivor Contest. Encouraging everyone to come out that weekend. Sign up with us. You can sign up anytime between now and when the NFL season kicks off. But great weekend, great excuse to come out to Las Vegas and the Circa hang out there. You enter in Vegas, play from anywhere. You hire a little proxy guy to enter in your picks. Very easy to do. $8 million in the Circus Survivor, $6 million in the Circa Millions. This is the year, Ryan, where we get one of those giant checks from Derek. Let's go. It's going to be awesome. CircusSports.com for all the details. And if you are the type that wants to uh, live a little, May I recommend my first official uh, recommendation for contest season? Uh, you can buy, I, b- I believe you can buy in. So if you're a one shot survivor guy, play Thursday night. Yeah. Get out there, sign. Well, maybe you get out there early, come back, play Thursday night. Maybe you take the lines, ballsy move. And when mm. you lose, you just buy back in. It didn't happen. You don't have to talk to anyone about it. <laughs> we let, I mean, we can, we can help you with that too. We can help you with yes. that justification Ryan, Ryan around and why it's plus EV mm-hmm. to play it that way, because there's no risk of you getting bounced. You just may have to put down another thousand yeah. dollars. You're you got that. Let's go. All right. ACC, as you said, the better half, maybe Still in the six and a half. This conference has uh, four teams with a si- or five teams with a six and a half win total. Next up, minus one forty to the over, plus one twenty to the under. NC State pl- twenty two to one to win the conference, seventy five to one to make the playoff, two fifty to one to win it all. NC State's chance was last year, and what they do, Colby. Well, they do what NC State Shit did, does, but I, I'm more optimistic about this year's team really? because they brought oh. in Robert and I and Brandon Armstrong, who ran oh. the same. Him and Robert and I were fire in Charlottesville for Bronco is, Mendenhall. Is that sick year six for Brandon Armstrong? I think 
somewhere he's, around there. He, oh, he's Van Wilder right there. Man. I mean, there you, you can't start a big program without a six-year quarterback these yeah, days I, in college football. It you does just seem can't. like an advantage. <laughs> no, it really does. How would it not be? It's um, only going to get worse with NIL too. Well, actually, when we get out of the COVID thing, though, there won't be the extra year of eligibility. That's true. Yeah, that 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 bonus year. But then I they'll mean, figure out a way. Like it makes the college game better. Let these another, guys get played. Yeah, yeah, that's true. To have another COVID. But Colby, I, I mean, my first instinct. <laughs> oh, maybe uh, Woo. Wuhan's gonna suppose. Well, how's <laughs> Wuhan's offense, Sean? <laughs> Yeah, but that, I mean, <laughs> things have been tight the, around the, the Tan household. He's been eating some bad Some of those soup. lab assistants at the Wuhan, they got like 12 years of eligibility. They're really into the they never finished the How's season. How's their NIO collective, right? No, they're they're so working pretty on the, strong, right? They're working on the next well, big They certainly have good there. distribution. <laughs> I mean, their coach is just reliable. 72 and 54. Yeah. It, he's, he's in his 11th season, eight bowl games. I mean, I'm looking oh, 2019 down year at four and eight. Everything else since 2014, uh, seven wins and above. I mean, I, I, how did they set this at six and a half? I know they're replacing a decent amount of returning starters, but they're bringing in Brennan Armstrong. They had a pretty good defense, 19.4 points per game. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, I know maybe the ceiling isn't there to Kramer's point. Like, maybe they missed their window of like making a big run, but I. I still like him at six and a half, right? What what am I missing here, Colby? Uh, no, I mean I, we're gonna dive into the schedule, but uh, yeah, look th- to me the problem last year in the previous couple of years was Tim Beck was their OC. He's now Coastal Carolina's head coach. I don't know how he was to finagle that because I thought the one clear weakness was they had talent, and the guy was a very bad offense coordinator in my opinion. Like he's super conservative, never really pushed the ball with the athletes they had, and uh, I I think that's this is an upgrade in a way. Now the roster is probably not as good as it was a year ago, but as yeah. far as philosophy on but quarterback, I think it's yeah, better, right. And just spreading out the offense and pushing, making you pay. They had really good players. It was just like, Hey, they always have talent. Yeah. Right? That's the th- thing. They always shit the bed with talent. They're, they've never won. They're, they're, they what haven't won an ACC championship since like the uh, Reagan, not even Reagan. Actually, I think the uh, N- Nixon administration or something, maybe uh-huh. Jimmy Carter, something like that. But uh yeah, I mean, I, I I think there's if you're an NC State fan, it pains me to say this. I think you should be optimistic because I I thought Devin Leary was always overrated. I've always thought Brandon yeah. Armstrong was a better quarterback than Devin Leary. Y- you were big fun. on Brandon Armstrong. He throws with his left arm, which is always yeah. unique. He's dual threat. It's like two. You know just, what I mean? Like ooh. he can stress out your defense. Where Devin Leary's kind of like just the poor man, Steve back Young. Then. Yeah. And and I believe I I could be misspeaking here. I believe this total opened. Six and is one of the totals that's taken the most money per one of those uh, sports book reporters. I love how that's a new thing. It's like a weatherman. You're <laughs> you're the sport. You're a sports book. See what reporter. we got here is we got a lot of money coming in. Oh, that's a funny on... show. The sports book reporters. You just, you just but it's only you show a gra- but, sh- show no, a map of no, the United it's, States. It's and just the you bets. looking. It's you reporting on the the crazy uh, vagrants that wander through the sports book that day to take a nap. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk schedule. Uh, at UConn to start, that's no cupcake. Tricky, especially yeah. especially because they are installing. Like they are really having a. We talked about Wisconsin. <laughs> I mean, Robert and I comes from right, Mike, yeah, Mike Leach's school. He was at different. Texas Tech with Mike Leach, so it, they're year, gonna air it out now. I if I if they were going to struggle, it's early. I think it'd be early. Per Sean's lead pipe uh, system of uh, teams going to or going away from the, <laughs> from the air. It's raid. not great. It's not great. And then you but, have, but you got to understand their starting quarterback is familiar already. Yeah, though. Th- so that does help. That's half. You the have no, Notre yeah. Dame, where uh, probably going to be a decent. Uh, this is an interesting spot here, I guess. Both teams will prove it spot. Then you have VMI after that at Virginia, Louisville, Marshall, both it, at home. It's a nice uh, Louisville schedule. on a Friday night. It's a nice at get. Duke, and then a bye week. There are what's that? Did seven you say Marshall games? at home. Yeah. Yes. It's a nice schedule, especially if they get through UConn. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I know UConn's that UConn's a tricky one. That's what I'm saying. Like Colby's a, rock hard for UConn. Hey, uh, well, Jim Moore, one of year our guys one, took right? him to a bowl with now. I, you know, I like, again, I, he's going to get the, why most are you seven. hating? Oh, I'm yeah. not hating. I just, every t- I feel like this entire conference, uh, oh, no. it's like a UConn better watch out. I mean, they are all playing UConn, which is weird. I feel like a lot of UConn ACC teams the, are playing UConn. UConn's going to join the conference. Worth noting, <laughs> worth noting. Uh-oh. 
16 and a half point favorites against UConn. Oh, oh, give me the wait, points wow. all day. Thursday at Thursday at UConn. Dude, come on. With that environment. I can write I can write Colby's yeah. part of this podcast. <laughs> uh all right, and then coming out, I mean that there's a lot of wins there. There's a lot of w- but winnable road games. Five and two. Five I mean, and you two. gotta love the road games because Virginia doesn't yeah. have an environment. Duke. Duke is right there in their town, yeah. and then uh, at UConn at the ranch where everyone gets twisted. Um, I mean, six and one. I'm going six and one. Then you have Cl- coming off the bye gets tricky. You have Clemson, at Miami, home, though, at least. both at home. Then at Wake, at Virginia Tech, close the season out it with rival a, North Carolina. It's not a bad schedule, man. You miss you miss Florida State. I'll take the over too. I think I think they have a nice schedule, dude. I mean, it, it, they could very well be six and one those first seven games, is, five and two. Just is, given the national championship now, no, but Green, I'm just right? saying after the bye, it gets much tougher. But you only need one or two games in my mind to no, hit that. No, you're over. right, and and I with Notre Dame kind of being a question mark. We even had Notre Dame's own Joe Theismann just say he thought they're overrated. Yeah. Um, I I think you got to take the over here, especially because like if it was at Louisville, then I would say okay, I think Louisville can win that. If it was uh you know some uh, you know, at Clemson, they're capable of beating Clemson at home. Yeah. So no, and those are two obviously tough games, but it's after your bye week losses? where you what probably got off to a good start, and they're both home. Dude, this road travel is hilarious because yeah. two of their road games are Duke and Wake Forest, which are right there. Yeah, and so then th- at Virginia Tech. <laughs> Sucks at Virginia. But that's not far sucks. away. Like they, they don't no. have a far trip. Yukon's the furthest trip. Kramer, it's like um I, I don't like the way this feels. They they only leave North Carolina three times, twice to go to Virginia. Yeah, Connecticut's which, their worst road trip. <laughs> That that's amazing. Actually, they're like the Steelers. That, they don't leave the Eastern yeah. time zone. Oh, they it, leave they leave to I mean Virginia Tech is like, what like not far yeah, that's from what I'm the border. Saying. Even Charlottesville's uh, not that far. Th- you're right. There's like not a lot hours, of travel here. Three three generous hours, schedule. Yeah. This is a very out, good op. I, I think t- to your point, they if they they can't trip up and start zero and two. Yeah, they they just need, if they dude it well if they well lose, we got UConn going twelve and zero this year, so well, that's a loss. Dude, even if they lost both those, those aren't ACC losses. Yeah. That's they're true. going to the championship. Well, I don't know. It's, it's well, NC State. Now that I'm looking at it, we're we're the a piece of twenty two to one might be had. Let's go. All right. Pittsburgh, all six and a half. This. We're all over. Yep. Pittsburgh, six and a half, minus one ninety over, one fifty five under. This is one of those ones uh we might have to have a conversation later. Very juiced to the over. Twenty five to one for the conference, one hundred to one for the playoff, two fifty to one. For the national championship, we mentioned this on the uh, part one, but Pittsburgh's defense is kind of one of those uh, stable factors of the ACC. Yet my notebook says never lay points with Narduzzi. They're they're tough as a big favorite when they're catching a bunch of heat, but I I mean at six and a half, I don't know if they're getting much hype. And Narduzzi, uh, eleven win season, nine win seasons, twenty wins in the last two seasons. Clearly, he's in game management's a, a little shaky. Uh, yeah, he's got a little Ray Horton to him, but I mean, uh, uh, he's, he's but he ba- gets them ready to play. No, it's, it's, and those this team's a pain in the ass for anyone to play because yeah. they, they're super yeah. physical. Tough, they're, tough spot to play late in the year too for some of these ACC teams. And I'll tell you this: like y- y- they had Kenny Pickett and then Keaton Slovis, Jerkovic, born and raised in Pittsburgh, transfers coming in. home. I'm a, I actually think he's really good. If he can stay healthy, that's the big thing. But he is a he's a gamer, man, and he's got wheels, and he's he's super athletic. Do I, I need to email about getting his eyes on listed too? <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame should have kept him. That's what's hilarious is we when we had Joe Theismann on the show, we were talking yeah. about Notre Dame quarterbacks. He's like they kind of just went with a serviceable guy. Jerkovic was there, and they were st- he was just sitting on the bench. Wait, and he's so what way was his better. or he went from Boston College? No, Notre Dame. Notre Dame Boston to Boston Co- College. Yeah, and now then last year he got. Injured slash opted out, out. Yeah, and and his OC from Boston College went to Pitt. He grew up in Pittsburgh, okay, so, so now, he's home. Yeah, Sean, I yes. kid you not, this team could resemble the Steelers. Ben no. Roethlisberger and at quarterback. La- yeah. Like last year, they didn't leave the uh, don't leave the Eastern Time Zone. I mean, I'm kind of bullish on this on the roster. It's a great stat. I think the roster is is. Oh, they don't have Jerkovich. Pretty good. Listed. I think I got an email about Jerkovich Heisman. Heisman <laughs> All right, let's do the schedule. All right. Wow. 
Wofford to start it out, then Cincinnati, as Colby said, kind of a, a mini rivalry. T- maybe t- uh, playing ten power fives, I can dig it. At West Virginia, North Actually Carolina, playing eleven power fives because Notre Dame's their other one. Yeah, you're right. At uh, North Carolina at home, at Virginia Tech, then their bye comes October seventh. Uh, both road games winnable. Uh, uh, the backyard brawl is a little tricky. Both road games winnable. Yeah. But you know they haven't played in Morgantown in like forever. That that both roads. Say, gonna burn I'm gonna four, call, yeah. call four, four and one. Four wins. Yeah, f- give me four and one. Uh, then we got Louisville. Uh, that's homecoming. That's that's a tricky one. At Wake Forest, at Notre Dame, back to back. They'll lose one of tough. those. Florida State at home. Then this they got their the, tough. Stretch, and they have yeah. Syracuse uh, on the baseball field. Well, clearly, clearly favors Pitt. And Thursday night, Boston College, and then close it out at Duke. This is this is a um, I understand why the number is the number minus one ninety to the over because this is playing a smash. 11, playing a, a smash. Yeah, I, I like the over smash. despite them playing eleven power fives. Yeah, because you can even wow. being cons- you it, know they could be five and zero. Oh going I into love the this. Buy. I love yeah. this. They could be. I mean, four well, and one feels pretty good, and then four, and three Flor- in the back half. And Florida State's got to go to Pittsburgh in November fourth. See, Florida State's good, but they, I don't. I think that's a bad matchup for them. Yeah, to your point, that's when you want to play these some of these uh, warm weather teams. They'll drag you out to the deep water. Now, the only thing is, if you're a Florida State fan, you kind of like how they're in South Bend the week I, before. So I, I'm looking all over the place, and this is how you can tell the books are a little scared. No one has moved it to seven, from what I can tell, uh, and it's it's the price out there is, is even more expensive than what we're listing in some places. So easy play for me. So if you're, I, if, if you're a pit fan, you miss out on Clemson, which I'm sure Clemson fans are happy about that. And Georgia tech and Virginia. Oh, you mi- all you have right? to say is you miss Clemson. Yeah. But you would like to get Georgia tech or Virginia. Oh, sure, but yeah, but yeah. They've been a seven win team every year since 2018. And, yeah, no, and you got to no, actually in, in Narduzzi's career at Pitt. If you toss out 2020, even then they still went six and five. If you toss out 2020, the only year they didn't get to seven wins was 2017, five and seven. And they have a factory on the defense of like just producing awesome D linemen and defensive backs. Yeah, love like that. And they they're just criminally underrated. All right, yeah, um, 25 to one. Maybe we'll peek at that. Next up, Miami seven and a half here, plus 120 to the over, minus 140 to the under. 23 to 1 to win the conference, 40 to 1 to make the playoff. That's crazy. 200 to <laughs> 1 to win the national championship. Uh, look, Miami, I know Miami and Virginia Tech are no longer seen as rivals by the conference, which is just horrible dog shit. I'm, if I'm going to sound like Colby th- about anything, it's that. <laughs> I, I mean, if there's been one consistent rival my lifetime, it's been Miami 1. Maybe West Virginia too, and then like UVA is beneath fucking Alabama. They played more uh, more competitive games with Alabama than they have with UVA. Ooh, oh, that's a dig. But Ooh. yeah, uh, Virginia Tech and Miami will not play each other every year anymore, and I'm sure Miami loves that because this, this is also a, a team that's transitioning to the air raid, uh, bringing it in for Tyler Van Dyke. Well, I mean, hope this guy Tyler Van Dyke is supposed to be good. Supposed well, it, to be good. Miami does yeah. have uh, one of the best offensive lines in the country. Had really bad injury luck, so maybe that breaks right for them. Is Cristobal going to get things well, going? The in schedule's too? not that bad, but no. I mean, look, oh. I, I'm a little I think concerned. The road games not are a that tough. bad. Uh, they they have get get completely butt fucked by Texas A and M. Week week two on the schedule. That's a mystery team, though. True, man. but like, that could be one of the outcomes because Bobby Petrino has things cooking. Bobby Petrino in Miami is a scary thought. All right, a lot of strip <laughs> clubs, <laughs> Woo, a lot of accelerants. Yeah. If you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, look, my, uh, you if you know me, there's there's a zero percent chance I'm going to find my way to the over here. I got tricked into thinking they might be good last year. I did this, too. This Van Dyke I, went on cat, the, I finally got. He I was sucks. like. I, I was finally buying into the fact I thought their schedule was weak. And what was the knock on Cristobal the entire time? I've, I, I've always been a skeptic of him. Well, by well, the way. And what's the knock on him? He can't coach. He can't exactly. Yeah. He's a recruiter. He can't fucking coach for shit. So that's what Miami's always been. They're, they're kind of in that same bucket. 
uh, as you know, talent wasters. Ever since they had the uh, the, the 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 team ne- they made the documentary on. Never before had I seen Justin Herbert look so average. So watch <laughs> watch watch Van Dyke that be is like incredible. When he when he's gonna go to the NFL, we're gonna be like, holy shit, who out. the hell is this? <laughs> yeah, Herbert he put a really governor did. on uh, fucking Justin Herbert. Herbert was that was comically not. I mean, and he wasn't even supposed to play. Dude, he, he made Justin me. Herbert look like Grant Wells. I was <laughs> like, so true. Yeah. I remember being like, I don't understand what this hype's about. And then like first preseason game on the Chargers, <laughs> like, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. who is this? Hey, and just yeah. unleash. How does that happen? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm always gonna find my way to look towards an under with Miami. I will say Colby's nugget or Colby's point to the schedule is true. They do have uh, a lot of winnable games, but they do get Clemson and Florida State, which is kind of the the divide. I think the divider true, for a lot like of these the, teams. They're going to be able to build the hype because they literally played no in the first five weeks. I Let's, mean, A and M is any the point? one. Any, any, is, uh, yeah. any hot takes over there before we hit the schedule? Any hot takes? Which, no, by the I, way, I if just, you are a younger person, go watch the documentary. I, I mean, what's interesting about Miami? I'm with you in in instinctively wanting to fade them. I, I just do think they're due for some injury luck regression. They do have a really mm-hmm. good offensive line. I, I I'm slightly not Cocaine. on board with Colby because I do think their road spots are particularly tough. They have well, their first five games are against teams with a losing record a year. Right. Ago. So again, it's like. A lot of these teams set up soft uh, up front, but I think their back half is particularly tough. Cocaine not good for the soft tissue, you know. Maybe it's not. Maybe their no. injury stuff won't regress. Miami of Ohio. Oh, wow, please. what are they doing to us? Miami versus Miami. Please establish who is the best Miami. <laughs> oh, I. This is going to be hilarious because the other Miami. Colby, what do you, what's the spread? Miami of Ohio versus the bad Miami. Oh, well, uh, well, Miami, Florida gets a, a little bit of. Love from the I feel like mm-hmm. minus twenty one. Really? No, no, no. Kramer? Miami of Ohio land too. <laughs> uh mini dickas. Uh <laughs> seventeen and a half points. Oh, uh, give me the points. I'll take the points too. <laughs> I'll take the points until we they need show a, me that need they a, can I'll play. Take the points, sure. <laughs> until they show me that they can play. I mean, Middle Tennessee threw for 400 yards uh, against this defense last year. I want to. We need to get a cut up of just Colby saying, "I'll take the points." I'll take the points. Uh, <laughs> then we got Texas A&M and Bobby Petrino coming to town. Okay, that should be a loss. Really? Yes. Then we have Bethune Cookman, who's Ed Reed was a coach allegedly for three days picking up trash, and then they decided to can't. Yeah, well, they kind of canned him, and after he did a video of saying no one ever cleaned my fucking office, and you guys still haven't gave me a contract. um, Yeah, it did seem like something was going on. They're really bad. So like that, that's that's going to be Texas A and M is a six and a half point road favorite. I'll lay the points. Really? Yeah, yeah. I me too. Yeah. Absolutely. Lay the um, and then at Temple, going into an early <laughs> bye week, September thirtieth. I I don't know. I sh- I'm sure Sean will be on game Temple on here. The schedule. But why, why are we um, go up and, and is, is this a, let's go to one. Philadelphia well, for, and, and play in front of twelve people? You unlocked this for us a couple episodes ago, but it's a, it must be a recruiting trip. Are they recruiting in the why? Northeast? Why you're in Miami? <laughs> You you're, don't need to leave. You're right? going up to Temple to. Re- is maybe there's someone. Maybe the a bag has to be brought up there. <laughs> Something they got to do in person. <laughs> That's a hilarious game. Uh, uh, so four and zero right? or three and three one. Three and, three and one. one. If Miami of Ohio wins Week One, though, look out. Definitely going. Oh, on that there. would be so great. Uh, Georgia Tech at North Carolina, then Clemson, Virginia, then at NC State. At Florida State, that's a tough stretch. Louisville, then at Boston College, it, not the best time to have to go up to BC. We were discussing that earlier. That's a tough spot. Obviously, at Florida State, I mean they are they are sixteen and a half point dogs right now in Florida State, and ten point dogs. Oh, sorry, yeah, ten point dogs uh, at home against Clemson. So and they don't have to play the Hokies this year, spreads. like cowards. I got them six and six. Yeah. Where where do they where are the six losses? Maybe A&M, even five and seven. It's all their road games, basically. No, look, A and M's the loss. Uh, originally, when I said six and six, I had them winning at North Carolina. Mm. Even though I think North Carolina's had their number in Chapel Hill, so we should probably take North Carolina there. But uh, Clemson's going to beat the hell out of them, I think. Okay, that's uh, three. Then at NC State and at Florida State, I think that's are both five. losses. Then I, I actually at think Boston College. No, okay. I think Louisville's better than them too. Yeah. All right. So smash under. under. I'm with you. Cosign. Let's go. 
Cristobal get fired this year? Is it possible? Nah, one more year. All right, think, Louisville yeah. eight and a half. Wow. Plus one thirty to the over, minus one sixty to the under, seven to one to win the conference. That feels mispriced. Fifty to one to make the playoff. Two hundred to one to win it all. I know we're excited about Louisville, but th- these odds suggest to me that a lot of other people have been excited about Louisville. Must and have been that early episode I did in February. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, so uh, this indicates that they're a live team in the conference, or at least they're being bet like that. Have them being at eight and a half, just like North Carolina, doesn't seem right to me. Uh, perhaps it's schedule related. Well, they have eleven Power Fives, but it's kind of a genius. Uh, Got some neutrals in there. So I've, I called for them already to go to the ACC championship. Wow. Um, how many how many teams have you called to make? No, on the okay. on the video, I jokingly said Boston oh, College, right. Louisville, but I really do have Louisville in there. Um, it's the schedule. What do you mean joking? You well, you benedicting that? No, in a perfect oh, okay. way, BC's right. ceiling could be that. Now, um, Louisville, I like. Yeah. Um, first off, Jeff Brom, I think, is a better coach than almost everybody in first the first year head coach, though. Uh, well, bringing in Purdue last year, though, yeah. he's a good coach, and he yeah, and he took Purdue to the Big Ten championship. And remember, yeah. Purdue, their best offensive player, was ruled academically ineligible because they actually pay attention to the rules of Purdue. It's hard to get guys into Purdue. It's hard to recruit. Guess where it's not? Oh, not Louisville. Louisville doesn't give a shit <laughs> right? about anything. So and Papa uh, John was running that place, and he goes and brings in Papa's Jack, in the house. He brings in Jack Plummer, who any relation to Jake? No, but he oh, was with so. Jeff Brown for three years at Purdue before he went to Cal last year. So uh, he knows the offense. It's this is a lot like the Brandon Armstrong thing. Oh. Uh, I I like what they got. Kevin Coleman, the, that's a receiver from Jackson State that surprisingly didn't follow Dion. That's tra- uh, uh, that's really talented. Same with Jamari Trash. I think there's a good team, man. I I really do, and I think that last year you look and say say this is an eight win team. I don't think they lost that much, and I think Brown brought in. Key guys in the portal. I think they're going to be. I think we good. watched this game in the office together. But Sean, if you remember the USC Cal game last year, where uh, it was a bit of a shootout, forty-one thirty-five. That was Plummer versus Caleb Williams. Where he, oh yeah, he threw for four hundred six versus Caleb Williams three sixty. So maybe we have to be high on this Louisville team. Oh, I am, buddy. Ashton uh, Gallette. Sacks leader, uh, nice little breakout year for him. They are switching from a four three to a four two five, not not as crazy as a three four switch, but. And you guys know, like the hit, like the Brom family in Louisville is renowned. Like it, this has been, this almost happened like four years ago. Oh, yeah, you have to be connected in Louisville. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like the buzz in Louisville about getting Jeff Brom, this is like this is like a match. You can talk me into this Louisville. Yeah. Team. Are you saying that they could also just? Shit themselves, right? Really hard. Well, the schedule's not like I said for having eleven power fives. This is the way to do it because they don't play Clemson. Uh, they don't play Florida State. No, they miss Clemson and Florida State. Oh, and who's who else do they miss? Really, it doesn't. North matter. Carolina. Who's Their hard who, game. Yeah, North Carolina and North Carolina. Yeah. That's their almost, hard games are at home. This is that, incredible. That seems oh, impossible. They, they miss home. all the good teams. Look at this schedule. And Jesus. when you factor in that they moved the Georgia Tech game out of Bobby Dodd and put it in that gigantic oh, yeah. stadium. All which right, yeah, which, let's which is like what all the seats are well, red. It actually right? doesn't say where it's being played, but I assume no, it's, it's at the it's dome. A, it's the uh, Mercedes Benz. Yeah, which okay, you all of his fans are going to come to see so his first game. This yeah. is Friday week zero. No, week one. They play in the dome. They're playing Georgia Tech. Th- this obviously hurts Georgia Tech's ability. Such, Georgia Tech to, only plays three home games because of this stupid thing. And and I will, I will say <laughs> that. The Louisville fan base, if they are excited about the team, they will be yeah, represented gonna be very oh. well. Uh, and Chick fil A will be sold, which is it's good. Big. Uh, Thursday, Murray State comes to town with an easy win. They are ass easy in the win. FCS, so that is a blowout win. I'll lay 49. Then you got Indiana, that, another not neutral. In, not yep. in Bloomington. This is what I'm saying. The schedule's genius. It, it's a neutral here, so. Uh, this that kind of feels like the. W- they only have three true road games. That's yeah. insane. That's Fe- what I'm saying. This, this feels amazing. This Indiana game feels like the. the let's see what kind of team we have. Game. Then you have Boston College at home at NC State. That will be the yeah. first this tester. Is, this is the, the three game stretch. Yeah. This is for, it right here. First tester. Then you have Notre Dame at home and at Pitt, and then your bye week. But if they just win either the NC State or the Pitt game, the Notre Dame game is irrelevant on them getting to the ACC championship. If yeah. they can just beat either Notre or NC State or Pitt. 
They're home free, baby. Notre Dame does have USC uh, the next week, so maybe there's a little look at, look ahead opportunity there. I think their road games are tough. I think their road games are are losable. I would probably make those the losses, and I think they win the rest of them. I got them true at, road game. So I, two or three losses for me uh, at the bye week or what? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I One got loss. Them. Yeah, I got them uh, sitting there at. I'll say, yeah, say like six and one. All right, I'll go two yeah. losses. Duke, Virginia Tech, Virginia, all at home. The last one on a Thursday night. That's three straight wins. Then at Miami, which again, you know, generally Miami ass away from home late in the season. Then Kentucky comes to town for a rivalry game. And that's game. the one you circle because of the Brown back in Louisville. Like this has already been Stoops has really built up Kentucky. This is their counter punch, bringing in Brom, who's a Kentucky guy. I can't wait to watch that game. It's one of my favorite games I want to watch all year. I don't know. I, you know, going through the schedule, I dis they missed they missed the tough teams, but they still I can still get to four losses a little too easily. Louisville alumni get, get how many NFL stadiums is that? Georgia Tech, Indiana, Pitt, and Miami. They go to four NFL stadiums. Man. I'm taking the plus odds over plus one thirty. Oh, I'm on the over. Yeah, over eight and a half. I don't day. even. I don't even see like a definitive loss on there. I don't think Notre Dame's is like great this year. At NC State, okay, that's a tough place to win, but they could uh, beat NC State. Th- their floor is four. It seems like their floor is four, lo- four or five losses, but it's fairly easy to get to three. I'll I'll stick out the over. I will stay on the over because I'm I'm with you. I don't think I feel strongly enough about the under to take the minus one sixty. Hey, shout out to underdog fantasy. If you haven't signed up over at underdog fantasy.com, what are you waiting for? $15 million up for grabs in best ball mania Four Kramer. And I love drafting these best ball mania teams. It's the best way to play fantasy football. Just draft it and forget it. And if you use promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit bonus up to $100 underdog fantasy.com promo code S G P N. All right. UNC, a true basketball school, uh, NIL probably going to help them a bit now that Michael Jordan doesn't own a professional basketball team. Maybe he can own a college football team. Eight and a half, one ten each way. Also seven to one to win the conference. Nineteen to one make the playoff. Hundred to one to win the playoff. I, I will say, I'll throw it up there. Hundred to one for a team that could have the number one pick in the draft. Is that worth the stab again? Lately, it seems like the top NFL guys have started to uh, I, uh, separate themselves sometimes with their play. And if if Drake May really is a guy, I would expect him to be able to carry this team through the conference because we we all agree there isn't a a ton of tough tests. It almost makes me think like brand wise too. North Carolina, they're in the top twenty-five to start the year, so they they have a path. A hundred to one, I, maybe you don't often get teams with these types of long shots that actually have a shot. Again, if they have the quarterback, it might not matter if they're playing an all-world defense. I'm interested here. Also, Mac Brown's got to be near retirement, right? This has to be like a one last go. I mean, Drake May is fifteen Perhaps. to one to win the Heisman, so obviously in the mix there. Yeah, but a hundred to one, the, the t- I, I, like defense is obviously the question. So, can, it's, uh, can they win shootouts? I mean, they're replacing an offense and defense coordinator too, so there's a little bit of a little bit of uncertainty there. But uh, yeah, their defense obviously is bad. Last in yards allowed per game in the ACC. Um, they're going to start blitzing more, t- so uh, creating some more variance, right? Is that good or bad? Well, I mean, <laughs> it's good if they get home. It's horrible if they don't. Uh, and they definitely were a team that got by the skin of their teeth with some of those wins. Four and zero in games decided by three points or fewer. I certainly, if I was a team that could score a lot, I would. Bl- I would be more risky on defense. Yeah. Cause then worst case, your offense comes back. I think it's, it's college football, deep. right? That's, Especially that's now. I mean, you know, NFL is ground and yeah, pound. Who the fuck needs defense? Uh, you know, college football playoffs. You got teams scoring 90 points combined. It's because they put in those filthy NFL domes. So it may as well you be know? arena league at this point. <laughs> I'm slightly skeptical of North Carolina just cause teams like North Carolina with hype. The schedule's tough, man. I, I get a little, do, skeptical. do they have a lot of hype Colby? I mean Drake May does. I don't know yeah. about the I don't know about the team, but Drake May does. 
again, it just seems like at some point, if you're going to be a, a dude, you should be able to drag a team through a, like I think about Andrew luck, for example, Stanford had some talent, but he, I mean, th- th- that's what I would expect. Like Caleb Williams started looking like that last yeah. year. Now we'll see if he can do it, but also to your point, the, uh, the expectations cause, cause the obvious trip up opportunities schedule and their schedule. They don't have as much of a cakewalk as some of these teams do in September. Well, they, and they open against South Carolina. So a real kind of who's, who's got it uh, to start the year that's Saturday uh, neutral field. Can't wait to do four thirty Pacific time in Charlotte. So uh, not sure if that helps either team. Unfortunately, it's not a true home game app state after that. Uh, little brother, oh, watch out! That game was oh, insane oh. last year. Remember that? Yeah, you were watching. Oh yeah. yeah. And then you have Minnesota. That was like uh, how many points? Was it was that? like that was 130 like 110. points. I yeah. feel like. Then like, you have Minnesota yeah. and at Pitt. Yeah, that's a brutal start to the schedule right there. Uh, I could see w- North Carolina currently laying one and a half points in Charlotte against South Carolina. <laughs> if you were wondering, I I got them one and three in the first four. What? Wow. What? I think Kramer, give me a, I need yeah. one of those like NASCAR suits. Just red hot. I'll say two and two app state won the but last I'm time with you. I'm this. with you. This is a tricky schedule again. That's why I'm not going to just pound the, I, mean, I, 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 I like Minnesota and Pittsburgh. I think they're better than North Carolina, the South Carolina you know app state game. I think they go one and one. It would be great to have Spencer Rattler beat Drake may. So Spencer Rattler draft hype can start getting, you know what? I'm with you two and two. Fuck it. By early by that's never good. Syracuse, Miami at home. This is a nice little stretch here. Virginia. I think, I think they win three straight, maybe home, four straight at Georgia tech. And then you get the Campbell Campbell Campbell. Watch him. Mike Minter. What are you talking about? Top 70 recruiting class in the top, it. past two years, both times. Then they have at Clemson. Well, they'll be 10. They're currently 10 and a half point dogs at NC state. That's a tough double. Uh, you right you there. skipped over the Duke game. Didn't oh, you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Duke is homecoming. Uh, there's a lot of wins here. That being said, I still think there's two losses on the back nine. Uh, I'm gonna go eight and four. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. All right, I'm under on them. I'm on the under too. I feel pretty good about Take it. Take back what I said about a yeah. hundred to one. Although I still think that might be. No, I mean the about. way you the game theory there is interesting. But <laughs> well, having a Heisman guy and being the Jordan Brand school uh, it seems like that. You know, the sports Illuminati could find a way. Uh, speaking of which, Florida State is back, baby. Nine and a half, one thirty minus one thirty over, plus one ten under. Only plus one eighty five to win the conference. Three eighty to make the playoff. Twenty to one to win the national championship. I felt like I feel like I fell asleep, uh, and something happened in college football, and Florida State all of a sudden is good again. There's n- there's no way this actually happened. Right. Well, here's what's interesting. They return the most production in all of uh, the country. Which Kansas, is crazy. Kansas offense is second. Put up, offense put up 36.1 uh, points per game. This is this is it's what's crazy. interesting. Is like they they've been great at the transfer portal. Yeah. But at the same time, you, first first ten win season since 2016. But you can take that two ways, right? Like, okay, shout out to them getting ten wins last year. But they only beat two teams with a winning record, and one of those was on a blocked extra point in Brian yep. Kelly's first ever game. Yep. The other thing is and they're they gonna played, get that game back. You go back and look at the schedule from a, a year ago. I want to say they had like they had some ridiculous stretch of. I think they played five straight backup quarterbacks. That helps, you know, your season. But at the same time, I do buy into the culture, like the fact that. Yeah, it was you like know, Georgia Tech, Miami, Syracuse, Louisville, yes. Florida. Yeah, and I think Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana ha- was, was one of them too. But um, my my. Oh yeah, you're right. Yep. My my point is that oh, that's really how they closed the season and crushed it. They weren't that good before that. Well, I still think they're all right, and I I, I do like like Verse could have went to the NFL and been like a first round draft pick. Their DN, he came back, right? Some yeah, well, of the, it's good. It's good times in Tallahassee when you're a, so, so, a starter on the football team. Some of those guys came back that I thought were going to go to the NFL. So I do believe like this team is is pretty uh, pretty loaded. They got Keon Coleman from Michigan State, who was like their best wide receiver. He just transferred in late. That was a huge addition that I think only strengthens that offense. But nine and a half is so high. They, it is they, they, when you look at the schedule. There's so I, many ways they can get we, to three losses. We already uh, shout out to the SEC preview. We already laid three with LSU. Yes. Yeah. So oh and so one. So opening the se- in Orlando, um, 
Do you know where they're playing this in Orlando? The World Camping. Oh, that's. Oh, yeah. I once watched a get Virginia your, Tech your, Rutgers game. Get your game. there. Yeah. Three dollar tickets. Amazing. Uh, Southern Miss. After that, watch it. Frank Gore oh, Jr. Boy. Daddy. Oh, Daddy's wow. a hurricane. Don't forget. Oh wow. No, but it is it honestly if like if they had beaten LSU, it's a sneaky spot for Southern Miss to catch them. Southern Miss a bowl team, but I still think they take care of Southern Miss. I, I'd like to see Frank Gore participate in a Oklahoma drill right now. Probably fuck someone up <laughs> at Boston College at Clemson. Jesus, they lose at Clemson, so two and two. Oh, wow, so they've already got two Three, losses. Yeah, and they they stew on this loss all the way into the bye week. Come out, Virginia Tech, Syracuse, Duke, all at home. Then you got at Wake at Not Pitt, easy. and Wake's had their number lately. Pitt in November, they lose one of those. They lose either Wake or Pitt. Then you have Miami at home, little rivalry game there, and then classic, classic look at the, SEC. Look move. at them trying. They're learning. They're, they're trying to suck up to the SEC schedule in North Alabama in November. What does he say in Matrix? He's beginning to believe. And then they got Florida at Florida at the end of the year. To me, I, I I will say this: I would not be shocked to see them drop all of these road games. I think they'll beat Florida and Boston. Maybe Boston College is a sleepy one, but I think they should beat Boston College too. And then at Pitt Wait. in November is tough. Yeah, I think Pitt. No, I'm not Boston College. Sorry, yeah. everyone. I but mean, Post- if, if they College. start two and two, they only need to lose one game to hit the under on yeah. the at post spot. They strike yeah. me as a a, a their not, ceiling. They're gonna for go me, like nine and three or eight and four. Yeah, I was gonna say I'd I'd be surprised. They can still be good, but this under is nine and a half, they're and not, then you're laying minus yeah. one thirty. They're not ten yeah. and two. They're not a ten and two it's team. A pretty, pretty tough schedule though. Also, yeah. Dabo. Uh, I don't want to. I mean, we'll, let's talk about it. Clemson, Dabo. This might be a little bit of a fuck, fuck everyone tour. It does feel like uh, Clemson uh, draw dr- drawing a lot of hate of late. Mm. Still a lot of NFL players running around that squad. Nine and a half minus one seventy to the over, being bet plus one forty to the under. One fifty to win the conference. Three fifty. For the playoff, sixteen to one to win the national championship. It's crazy. They went eleven and three last year. Got to like a New Year's Six Bowl and still fired their offensive coordinator. I mean, who who was a former quarterback for them? Yeah. Alumni. It was yeah. like you, and Dabo was <laughs> Sorry. friends with them. Yeah, it didn't just work shows out. you yeah. how high the standard well, is for this Clemson team. It shows you who's running the team, the money behind the scenes, the church. Yeah, yeah. in the Clemson's case. <laughs> Defense lost uh, four all ACC players to the NFL draft. That's crazy. It, that's every year, though. I mean, their defensive line's always loaded. Yeah, They're every year. Their defense loaded. should be good. Yeah. I'm rocking my Brian Dawkins jersey. Ooh. And honestly, Ooh. as we see the uh, conference, uh, the, the conferences separate talent wise, like that will be the big difference in the ACC, I think. You'll start to see the Clemson uh, defensive line and other teams with that same kind of caliber defensive line dominate even more. Ooh. Yeah. I, I I would say that the betting the money is probably correct to be going towards the over here. I d- it does seem like w- the years of like Clemson just walking to a championship are over. They do run into Miami, Florida State, Notre Dame, North Carolina. They catch all the tough teams. So if they're going to do it, they're going to have a decent strength of schedule it seems. Well, I mean, they do avoid Louisville, they do avoid that, well, they, who? That's true. Uh, no Virginia. They avoid Virginia and Virginia Tech. Yeah, I mean that's what. What do we got there? You got a little spider action going. Oh, in. he made it over there. He was yeah. over by me. I kind of yeah. shot him over. <laughs> uh, we saw. Get the, the haunts of lions, tigers, and spiders. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think they're they're going to be tested. They're going to have to play. They miss at NC State, I guess. Would be the No, they got no, NC State. They're at Sorry. NC State. That's that's so they, actually one of the losses I have. So they, the of the of the entire top half of the conference which we're talking about today, they only miss Pittsburgh and Louisville. Oh, the, but the, that's the pit the pit one is like that's the perfect team to fuck with Clemson, especially late in the year. Yeah. So and we look at the non-con uh, let's I mean let's walk through it. At Duke, Charleston Southern, which that's an easy win. Yes. And Florida Atlantic, easy win. Where what, what conference is Florida Atlantic in? AAC. Now? Oh, okay. So they're new to the American. Uh, it does a, look like they have a giant dong on their helmet. E- another easy dong. win. Another easy one. Yeah. It's like the Rams logo. No, I think FAU could give them a, a, a better test. See, because you got to remember this that they're going to, I mean, Garrett Riley runs a lot of the air raid stuff, kind of the Art Bryles shit. Wait, who's and, the head coach at FAU? Uh, Tom Herman. Oh, yeah. wait. And he brought in Casey Thompson at QB, who's very experienced. Remember so, when he got hired by Texas and then just disappeared? 
Remember when he got fired at Texas and he was like ten points away from an undefeated season? <laughs> they really um, the, Texas is amazing. Uh, and you have Florida State at home at Syracuse. They always struggle at Syracuse. That yeah. game make, makes me a little paranoid because it's a great letdown spot because they beat top ten Florida State. The very next week they go up to that filthy dome. Uh, one loss. I think they're yeah. probably going to be undefeated at there. Yeah, but I mean your road games are one, at Duke, yeah. at Syracuse. I, I'm with you, undefeated. Maybe Wake uh, gives them a bit of trouble. Then you have at Miami coming off the bye at NC State, a little back to back spot loss. there with That's Notre Dame loss. on deck. Who? That's your loss. Georgia Tech then at North Carolina, both at home uh, at South Carolina to close out the year. That it could come yeah. down. I could see them sitting down two wins coming into that South Carolina. I, two losses. Or two losses. Yeah. Or two wins. I, uh, I want to bet. I could see it going either way. I want to bet Clemson to go undefeated this year. That's the prop I want to take. Uh, I think you got you got to take the over two. By, by even at even at minus one seventy, I still think you take. Yeah, that. I think they're uh, w- worst case ten ten and two. So you can take over ten plus one hundred five. Mm. For what it's worth, you know, it's just push. You're worried about the push at ten. I'm not. I would take that in a heartbeat. I think this is a twelve. This is undefeated eleven and one team. All right, time for our locks and our future bet. Kramer, what do you got? Pew pew pew. Pit over lock. Okay. Uh, I let's 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 stay on brand. Miami goes under. Disappoints once again. The future I like the most. I mean, I guess just give me give me a little pit pit to to win the conference. Ooh, that's a that's twenty five to one. They, spicy. They were in the mix. Last pit year. and Wake Forest playing in the conference champ. No, I, I do think Clemson. These are all. I mean, hedge I, I think what the that that second place team. There's so many actually you know scenarios what? where one of these other teams makes it up. I'd like to add to my uh, portfolio. Okay. Clemson wins national championship sixteen to one. Okay. Wow. All right. For me, Pitt over six and a half. And then uh, oh, I do like Louisville over eight and a half as well. You but know, I'll, I'll play them in the future. I'm going to go NC State. There is a chance Louisville has, has done something bad and is receiving uh, karmic failures in return for a little bit. Over six and a half. I like Louisville to win the conference at seven to one. That and price then doesn't sandbag good and son of a bitch. And then also, I'm going to take them to get to the college football playoff wow. because, <laughs> just because I think there's there's a world where they everything breaks oh. right for Louisville because of that schedule is just insane. They're 11 and one. Um, they win the ACC championship game, and you're I don't think they have a chance of winning the Natty at 200 to one, but. Getting into the college football playoff at fifty to one is fun. But in that world where they've won the conference, they probably make like Right, that's what I'm saying. Like I can they get in with it would have to be a two loss with you know what? with delete, other help. Delete the conference. Just give me oh, wow. them to win or them to get into the college oh, football wow. playoff at, at fifty to one. We're re- we're really giving What's out. What's in some that bangers. cup over there? Yeah. No, no, because uh, if they if to your point, if they win the ACC. Yeah. I guess maybe they're a two loss ACC winner, I, but I, I think they. Then how do they get to the ACC championship? No, they could lose mm. to Notre Dame though. And right. Notre Dame's not in, in the, the ACC, and maybe yeah. that hurts yeah. there. But still, seven to one, fifty to one. I'm going fifty to one. All right. Colby, what do you got? Uh, I will take Pitt over six and a half wins. Yep. Yep. I'm also oh. going to take North, first time that's happened. North Carolina under eight and a half, and the future. Let's go with Louisville to win the ACC. Louisville. Yeah. All right. C seven. Louisville. Is it at Louisville? Louisville. From Louisville. Louisville. From Louisville. Louisville. Hey, Louisville. Toss this nice rating and review. Subscribe to the college football experience. Get all 133 team previews. NFL team previews right around the corner. Join the auto download army. Turn those auto downloads on. FCS conference previews. FCS conference previews as well. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second loading green, and he's Ryan. Officially did l- more unders than overs. Kramer, let it ride.